Good morning, everybody. It is Abigail from our Alaskan Oasis Homeschool Collective, where we are on a mission to build a collective of global literacy coaches empowered with the skills of direct instruction, precision teaching, PACs, and SDE. Today is Friday, November 12th, 2021, and we are in our sixth week of our workshop series. We have one more workshop left after this week, and it is next week will also be the full moon. Today is chicken soup for the soul day, domino day, and national French dip day. I am Abigail Twyman. We are here on Prince of Wales Island in Clinket Ani, the traditional homelands of the Clinket Haida and Simshian people. And every day we synchronize our actions to the moon cycle. Right now we are in the first quarter moon of the moon cycle, which means that we are exploring possibilities. And we are em employing a humanistic approach to life. I am a behavioral scientist, a creative writer, and a data-driven optimist. Thank you so much for being here today. Our daily challenge today is um, for, or for Full Bore Friday. We have our fact of the day, which is that in this day in history, or on this day in history, November 12th, 1981, the Yavapai Nation succeeded in stopping the construction of a dam. And to read more, you can click on the link and um, read about that day in history, share with your kids, and then share what you learn. As I mentioned, today is also Chicken Soup for the Soul Day. Th these are books that I used to love when I was younger and growing up, and I checked out what they have going on now these, th these days, and they actually have a podcast, Go Figure. And um, it looks like they have a ton of really heartwarming episodes, so I encourage you if you're looking for a little something extra special to add into your homeschool day, um, there's a lot of really, really good stuff on there. Additionally, it is Domino Day. And so while I was doing my research for our presentation today, um, I was checking out some Domino videos on YouTube. And oh my goodness, they have some amazing works of art and Domino art. And so I linked a, I linked one of the videos there and encourage you to check it out. And I promise you that you and your kids, once you start watching these domino videos, you will not want to stop. We watched one that was oh, half a million dominoes <laughs> falling last night. It was pretty amazing. It's also National French Dip Day. And I don't know about you, but I love me a French dip. And it sounds like a perfect dinner tonight for, or especially for a cold night as winter is, is coming in. And so we've linked a, a tasty slow cooker recipe for you for your own French dips. So as you are um, exploring these options for incorporating into your homeschool day, I hope you have an opportunity to share with us what you learned and how you celebrated these um, remembrances for today. As always, in review of our agreements as we're entering into this workshop, we always remember that when we leave here, we are ensuring to share stories in ways that protect, uplift, inspire, and empower others. We listen for change and take responsibility for our actions and any hurts we might cause. We are all committed to being more impactful with our actions and hold ourselves and each other accountable. We pause to regather our thoughts or focus when needed. If you hear something that really resonates with you, feel free to type that, type that out and share it, share it with others when you're sharing the, um, sharing the work that we're doing with people in your network. If you're here live participating in person and it's, there's an opportunity to share and you're not comfortable, you're always welcome to pass. And we always use sound verbal behavior when we are communicating to ensure that the impact of our verbal behavior, the things that we are saying and doing, uh, matches the intention of our verbal behavior. So we 
So we all now are ready to FBT. That means that we agree to really listen to ourselves and each other, be radical in our um, decision making and take action that is committed and in alignment with our values. Our values are to act with pride every day. That means that we are acting committedly together with precision, respect, integrity, determination, and enthusiasm. Our mode of mantra has a little ditty that goes along with it to help us remember because music helps us um, embed thoughts and embed uh, messages into our brains, helps us remember them more easily. And so if you Know the ditty, sing along with me. If not, just listen along. We live resourcefully and sustainably. We embody peace, love, and joy. We effectively advocate change. We fuel genuine heart connections. We know who we are as a family. We are strong and self-assured. We are confident and motivated. We are happy, vibrant, and full of life. We totally love and accept ourselves. We are enough and all we can be. We are committed to taking action. We act with pride every day. All right, now let's get started. So today we have three guiding questions to, um, to walk us through our workshop today. The first one is how could we incorporate more self-directed education? We're going to use the ACT matrix to continue um, exploring how to apply this tool to a variety of questions. So you can learn how to make shared decisions with your family and a lot uh, more smoothly. Uh, our second guiding question is, what could we do to make our homeschool curriculum more meaningful? And we're going to be using the PACS tool, Shared Vision, to explore possibilities around that question. And then we'll be taking some time together um, to continue or start your um, story, if you haven't already, in response to the final guiding question, where do we want to be in 10 years? Before we get started, um, we are on to, uh, we have been introducing this book, A Liberated Mind, How to Pivot Towards What Matters. There are six pivots to improving your psychological flexibility. And in this book by Stephen Hayes, he has for every pivot, there are a number of exercises to um, teach you and how and to practice these skills and develop your own psychological flexibility. The third pivot, we've done pivots one and two. Um, the third pivot is called acceptance, learning from the pain. And the exercise that we're going to do together today is called say yes. So I will read the passage here and read this exercise and we'll take some time to do it together. <clears throat> a core skill in acceptance is to be willing to have events be what they are. You can start practicing just by looking around. As your eyes land on anything, see what it feels like to look at it from a point of view of no, meaning no, that is not good. That has to change. I want that the hell out of here. That is unacceptable. Simply look at a specific thing that you see and mentally adopt a no approach to it. Then move to another item as you scan the room and do the same over and over. Do this for a couple minutes. So we're just going to do this for a few seconds. So as you're sitting there, um, and you can go ahead and pause the video if you're watching this after the fact, what I'd like you to do is simply look around the room, scan it, 
and lock your eyes onto something in the room and simply say to yourself or say out loud, no, or no, I don't like that, or no, that is not okay. So I will do that. No. 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 So now you're going to repeat the scan, but this time do it from the perspective of yes. Meaning, yes, that is okay. That is just like, or that is okay. That is just like that. It does not have to change. I can allow that to be just as it is. Again, simply look at this, a specific thing that you see, mentally adopt a yes approach to it, then move to another item as you scan the room and do the same thing over and over. You can do this for a couple minutes by pausing, uh, pausing the video, and I will model it now. You're just simply gonna scan the room, lock your eyes on something. Yes, yes. Yes, that is good. Yes, that can stay just like it is. Now take a pause to see if you can sense how different the world seems inside yes versus no. Back in chapter eight, I asked you to put yourself in a physical posture expressing you at your best and then you at your worst when faced with difficult experiences. If you were like most people, at your best, your body assumed a more open posture, head up, arms out. The yes and no ways of looking at the world tap into a similar mindset. The open and accepting one and the avoidant and controlling one. A way to ratchet up this yes, no exercise is to add to it the physical posture exercise. This time, when you're doing the yes cycle, put your body in an open position, standing or sitting tall, palms up, arms out, head up, eyes open, legs apart. And when you are in the no cycle, put your body in a closed position, arms in, head down, eyes lowered, legs closed, fists and jaw clenched, stomach muscles tight. Notice very carefully how your experience differs. So let's go ahead and do that together. Sit up straight and tall. We're gonna start with the yes cycle. Shoulders up and back, hands, palms open, arms open, head up. And now scan the room. And this is the yes cycle. Scan the room, lock your eyes. Yes, yes. Yes. And then for the no cycle, you're gonna be hunched over, uh, fist clenched, scowl on your face, arms crossed. No, 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 no. You can move on to do this exercise with specific thoughts, emotions, urges, and memories. Over time, you will begin to notice as you go through your daily routines that sometimes you settle mentally and maybe also physically into a no posture without meaning to. Noticing the mental and physical cues can help you catch yourself and consciously adopt a yes posture instead. All right, so let's talk about our first guiding question, which is how could we incorporate more self-directed education into our homeschool experiences or homeschool programs? So we're going to use the ACT matrix to explore possibilities around this question. And in review, the ACT matrix is a way that we can come together and make shared decisions um, as, a, as a group. So you can use this with your family, you can use this with a community group or any organization that you're involved with. If there are decisions that need to be made, this is a great way to structure the conversation. So the way that you start, you start down in the lower quadrant, 
um, number one, we talk about brainstorm and, and, and get everybody's input about priorities, values, and goals. And then we move up to box two, where we talk about actions that we can take that move us closer towards our priorities, values, and goals. And then we move into box three, where we brainstorm actions that might move us, that would move us away from our priorities, values, and goals. And then finally, we move into box four and brainstorm and get everybody's input on thoughts, feelings, and barriers that would that we predict might come up when we're moving away from our priorities, values, and goals, as those are indicators that we can notice and that indicate that we're moving away from our priorities, values, and goals. So we can take a pause and get back in alignment. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a few minutes to brainstorm by ourselves the priorities, values, and goals that are important to us in, in regard to self-directed education. And then we're going to summarize our input here in the chart. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go blue today. Okay. So, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set a timer for one minute. This is another one of our PAX tools that we have access to is Beat the Timer on the PAX Tools app. We're going to set the timer for one minute and just have a time for some silent reflection to brainstorm ideas around priorities, values, and goals about self-directed education. So how to incorporate more self um, and more self-directed education into our homeschool programs. Let's go ahead and brainstorm and then we'll add our thoughts to the chart. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the timer goes off in the, in the app. Um, okay, so now we will put our thoughts um, in here. So what are some priorities, values, and goals that you have around, around self-directed education and maybe why it's important to incorporate self-directed education into your homeschool program? Okay, so learning values, being inspired and excited about their goals. And I came up with um, uh, values related to uh, choosing things that are child-centered and focused on talent development, like whatever like skills that they want to, um, that they want to learn. Uh, incorporating creative, um, creative arts, creative expression, um, and having things that are fun and interesting. And then um, the other thing that came to mind is STEAM or STEM, the like science, technology, education, or education, engineering, arts, and math. Um, those types of activities for self-directed education tend to be the ones that um, are most fun and get, our, get the most creative creativity flowing. Okay, perfect. So now, so now the second, the second part of this is to look then at our priorities, values, and goals. So if we want to have more self-directed education incorporated into our homeschool programs. That means that we are prioritizing, valuing, and have, have goals around teaching our kids values. We want them to be inspired and excited about their goals. We are focused on you know, following their lead and uh, creating opportunities that are child-centered. We're creating opportunities for them to develop their talents and their skills that that they're interested in developing. Um, we want to encourage create, creative expression, 
we want we want to incorporate things that are fun and interesting and maybe some more um, STEAM or STEM activities. So the second part of the ACT matrix is to brainstorm actions, like specific things that you could do that would um, get us closer to those priorities, values, and goals. So just thinking about in your homeschool program, what are things that you, you that you might do specifically for your kids and your family um, to get closer to that, that ideal? So again, we're gonna set a one minute timer, give ourselves some time to time to brainstorm, and then we'll add our um, uh, add our input to this section. Ready? Okay, got it. All right, and let's begin. All right, so what things did you come up with that, um, that you might be able to do that would get you closer to the priorities, values, and goals for self-directed education? Excellent, okay, those are, those are wonderful. So having time on good apps, using the parent, parent controls to your advantage, um, accessing, making sure that there's lots of interesting and stimulating books around the house. So there's lots of access to interesting things, taking advantage of those kits that are out there. That's an awesome opportunity. Um, giving them free time to explore and having conversations to empower and empowering your kids to ask for what they want and need. Um, another thought I had related to this one, there are actually some structured preference assessments um, that we can use that kind of, you know, sometimes uh, it's hard to come up with ideas. And so using some structured preference assessments can actually help us, you know, broaden our, uh, broaden our horizons a little bit. Another idea that I had was having um, like exploration days and, you know, maybe scheduling, putting those into your um, homeschool schedule or having, you know, uh, if everybody's kind of having a, an off day, maybe just have an explore day. Um, another thought I had was asking family and friends about special skills and talents that they have that they might want to share. Um, and then I'll put this one here because I'm kind of running out of space. The other thing that I came up with was, you know, YouTube. YouTube is a wonderful resource for coming up with lots of um, good ideas, or it can be. Excellent. Okay, so now let's move on to the third box here. Okay, so now we're going to be brainstorming actions, things we might do that would be moving us away from these priorities, values, and goals. So moving away from self-directed education. So what might you, what might that look like? What might you be doing? What might your kids be doing um, that would indicate that you're moving away from um, this, the value of self-directed education? Okay, so we'll do another minute of think time and then we'll share out. You ready? All right. Okay. So now let's add our thoughts to this section. So having a, a strict schedule or curriculum, being overly busy, having limited resources, um, having a dominating, dominating parent, parenting style or dominant parent, not checking in with the kids or taking over decision making and not giving any choices. So those are great. Um, and I had all of those same ones. And then the other one that came, only other one that came to mind was, um, downplaying or disregarding their interests. So, you know, if they, um, express an interest, I've, you know, I've seen this happen before where, where parents kind of 
kind of poo poo their ideas or, you know, kind of shut them down before they even have time to explore that. Um, it's okay to set healthy limits. <laughs> But yeah, I'm thinking more along the lines of, you know, uh, a kid says, oh, I'm really interested in doing this. And, you know, a parent saying something like, oh, you're, you know, that's not, you know, that's not something that you would be good at. Or, you know what I mean? Like kind of, you know, not giving, even giving them the opportunity to explore that um, interest or idea. All right. So the final step in using the ACT matrix is to think about what thoughts, feelings, or barriers you predict might come up for yourself. Like if you're, if we're kind of living in box three where we're moving away from our values. So if you um, find yourself being overly strict or you know the curriculum's too rigid or overly busy and, um, or some of these other things, what, what are some thoughts you might be thinking or what, some, what are some feelings you might be having um, that would indicate that you're moving away from your values? We'll give ourselves an, another minute to think and then we'll share out. That's it, folks. All right. Okay, so. What came up for you in response to this question? All right, so those are good. Um, so some thoughts and feelings that might be coming up. So feeling fearful, um, feeling, you know, thinking that you're, you know, you're concerned about missing important educational elements and make, and, uh, you know, fearful that your kids aren't keeping up or you're not, you know, doing like doing right by your kids. Um, a you know barrier to uh, living in accordance with your values could be you know the parent taking over or having lack of confidence in um, you know in that letting go. Um, a thought that came to my mind was, um, I don't have time for that. So sometimes, sometimes, just you know thinking about letting go you know, into the, you know, going into the wide unknown can feel very, um, you know, unbridled. Can, you know, if you're feeling like you need to rush through something or get through something, that thought might be coming up, that you don't have time for creativity. Um, and some other thoughts, feelings, or barriers could be, um, words that came up for me were critical, domineering, um, Kids might be feeling unseen or unheard. Um, kids might be feeling, or you might be feeling that you're, you have to force things, you know, you have to force or, or coerce them to do things. Um, and one or more people might be having feelings of unhappiness, might be feeling unhappy or unfulfilled or unmotivated uh, or something like that. Hmm. I can't spell. Bill. Okay, there we go. Okay. okay. All right. So I hope you can start, you can see that, um, that now that we've taken time to brainstorm ideas and incorporate all of our ideas into kind of this shared act matrix, um, I hope you can start to see that this is a this is a good strategy for just kind of getting all of those thoughts out, and so it can help us make decisions or have more confidence in our decision making um, about what we want to do, what we want to do more of, and then it also gives us an idea of what the thoughts and feelings that might be coming up, so we can notice those things. So if you are, you know, if you're kind of focused and you're living in the present moment and you start to have these thoughts or have these feelings and you're not feeling confident or you're feeling like you're, you know, critical, of, you're you know, feeling overcritical of things or your kids are expressing that they're, you know, 
themselves either verbally or non-verbally that they're feeling um, forced or unhappy or unseen can kind of give you give you an indicator that it's time to take a pause and reflect upon um, you know where you are and how you can uh, what steps you can take what actions you can take to move closer to your values and goals when it comes to self-directed education. All right, we are moving on to our second guiding question, which is what could we do to make our homeschool curriculum more meaningful? So for this question, we are going to be utilizing the PACS tool shared vision in order to explore possibilities and um, come together as a family to have a conversation about um, about what we want to see, feel, hear, and do more of, and what we want to see, feel, hear, and do less of. This is a way we can establish shared expectations of each other um, and ensure that everybody is on the same page. In review of the PAC shared vision, going, I'll provide some background for this tool and how it can be used. Think about how we can easily misinterpret someone's meaning based upon our understanding of a word, phrase, or situation. As adults, we say things to children such as, I need you to be quiet or please behave. Children, some of whom are still learning language, might have a very different interpretation of those words. We say many things to kids that don't mean very much to them, and then we are upset when they don't meet our expectations. Think, did you make your expectation clear to begin with? Shared vision establishes the expectations for an environment or situation through discussion when adults and children discuss what they would like to see, hear, do, and feel more of, and what they would like to see, hear, feel, and do less of. It is similar to a set of rules in that it establishes expectations, but different in that the adult guides the discussion, but the children really lead it, whereas typically adults set the rules for children to follow. A vision can be broad or narrow. We can create a vision for a softball season, would be broad, or we can create a vision for the bedtime routine, which would be narrow. So here is the recipe. When using shared vision, first you will co-create your expectations for what you and the children want more and less of in order for the task to be successful and peaceful. Be very specific about the expectations. When children provide their input, do not discourage their ideas, but reframe if necessary. If you are creating a shared vision and the child says they would like more of something you do not want, decide if it is achievable. It could be a prize or should not happen at all and should be redirected. For example, Imagine you are creating a shared vision around bedtime routine. The child says that they would like to do more playing at bedtime. Would it be possible to play more in the rest, if the rest of the routine went smoothly? Could we make time to play if brushing teeth and getting re ready for bed did not take so long? Could extra playtime be a reward for positive behavior? If there is no room for extra playtime, acknowledge that you know they would like to play longer, but we all have to go to bed so that we get our rest and our bot get the rest that we need for our bodies to stay healthy. So now let's go ahead and practice using the PAX tool shared vision to explore possibilities and um, set shared expectations around this question, what could we do to make our homeschool curriculum more meaningful? So here's how we do this. And we're go I'm going to rephrase this into a statement. 
if our homeschool curriculum was more meaningful, we would see more blank. If our homeschool curriculum was more meaningful, we would feel more blank and so on. And then on the converse, on the left side, you would say, if our homeschool curriculum was more meaningful, we would see less blank. If our homeschool curriculum was more meaningful, we would hear less blank. So we're going to go ahead and take, rather than one minute, we are going to take three minutes because there are more sections here. So I'm going to reset my, uh, my PAX tool, beat the timer to three minutes. And we're going to start with this top section. So for the next three minutes, we're just going to focus on the more. If our homeschool curriculum was more meaningful, what would we see, feel, hear, and do more of? Let's begin. That's it, folks. All right. Okay. So now we'll go box by box and incorporate our input. So if our homeschool curriculum was more meaningful, we would see more. And I came up with that we would see more engagement and we would see more um, interaction and those were the ones that I came up with. Okay, so we would see more books and educational materials and kits around the house. We would see kids taking new directions. We would see, see kids making achievements, being engaged and interacting. Perfect. So for our next box here, if our homeschool curriculum was more meaningful, we would feel more, and I said that we would feel more connected and we would feel more self-esteem and we would feel more accomplished. Excellent. All right, on to the third one. If our homeschool curriculum was more meaningful, we would hear more, uh, we would hear more joyful noises. And we might hear more positive comments, positive self-talk. And we might hear more questions. We already got up there. We might hear more. What else? creative expression. All right. And then finally, for this first section, what would we be doing more of? If our homeschool curriculum was more meaningful, what would we be doing more of? And I said we would be doing more skill development and hands-on learning. <clears throat> And we would be doing our, that's it, okay, cool. All right, so now we can see um, that the way that we would maybe restate this in one big fell swoop. So if our homeschool curriculum was more meaningful, we would see more books, educational materials and kits, See kids taking new direction, making achievements, being more engaged, interacting. We would be feeling more happy, excited, inspired, creative, uh, flow state, 
connected, self-esteem, and accomplished. We would be hearing kids coming up with new ideas and questions and directions. We would hear lots of joyful noises, positive self-talk and creative expression. And we would be doing more exploration and learning days, experimentation, following our interests. We would be doing more fun stuff and developing our skills and doing more hands-on learning. So that is this beautiful vision of what um, what your homeschool would look like if your if your curriculum was more meaningful to you and to your family. Whoops, switch back. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we're going to do the same thing for the bottom half of this. The one key to remember when we're doing this is we always want to make our lessons more or we want to make our lessons less than our mores. <laughs> so um, that means that we really, you know, we with this process, um, setting expectations, we're, we want to focus more on the positive while still acknowledging the negatives. Um, and so we'll do the same three minute, um, three minute brainstorming. And the guiding question here or the, the um, STEM sentence would be, if our homeschool curriculum was more meaningful, we would see less blank, we would feel less blank, we would hear less blank, and we would do less blank. So three minutes um, for some brainstorming, and then we'll come back together and share out. That's it, folks. All right. So Let's go ahead and share out. If our homeschool curriculum was more meaningful, we would see less. And I said that we would see less off task behavior and we would see less crumpled paper. <laughs> If our homeschool curriculum was more meaningful, we would feel less, that we would feel less forced and angsty, the words that came from. All right. If our homeschool curriculum was more meaningful, we would hear less. And I added arguing. <laughs> All right, and if our homeschool curriculum was more meaningful, we would do less, or I said, we would be doing less canned curriculum and less busy work. Um, and all right, so. Then we have, so to summarize, if our homeschool curriculum was more meaningful, we would see less behavior issues, wasted time, off-task behavior, and crumpled paper. We would feel less resistance, boredom, stress, worry, for, uh, force, and angst. We would hear less complaints and whining and arguing, and we would be doing less disliked activities, forced motivation, canned curriculum, and busy work. So hopefully you can see that by going through this process and having this conversation, incorporate taking time to think to ourselves and then share out um, is a great way to, you know, to set some expectations and establish some expectations as a group. And then the cool way that you can utilize this tool is um, to predict monitor and reflect what, upon what is actually happening. So if our goal is to make our curriculum more meaningful, um, we can have this conversation, kind of set expectations for ourselves and each other about how we do that, what it would see or what it would, um, what it would look like, feel like, hear like. Um, and then that gives us an opportunity to kind of predict if we go, you know, we're going into the situation, we're homeschooling, and we predict that this is what we're going to see, feel, hear, and do. You're monitoring what you actually see, feel, hear, and do while things are being done. And then you take time to reflect upon um, 
what happened and then give ourselves and each other feedback to, to um, see whether or not we, you know, lived up to our own expect our shared expectations. And if not, that can be a good opportunity to debrief and reflect upon what we could do better next time. All right, now it is time for our final guiding question of our workshop today, which is where do we want to be in 10 years? This is an exercise which is uh, recommended in the book, A Liberated Mind, how to pivot towards what matters. And by doing these writing exercises and thinking exercises, it gets us to kind of get out of our, you know, where we are right now and all of our stresses and our worries and really think far into the future about our future selves and who it is that we want to be as individuals and as a family or as a community. So this is a really, can be a powerful exercise to getting us in alignment with our deepest held values. So what we're going to do today is I am going to allow you to choose whichever one of these STEM sentences that you would like to take some time to reflect upon, choose that. Whether you wanna think about what your future self in 10 years, five years, three years, one year, three months from now, one month from now, or just a week from now. Um, I want you to take about three minutes and just write whatever comes to mind, and then we will take time to share out our responses. And please begin. That's it, folks. All right. So now, so if you feel comfortable, you are welcome to share what you came up with. I said, I stuck with the 10 years at the top. And I said, in 10 years, I will be running a wellness and transformation retreat. Um, I will be empowering families worldwide. I will have developed a worldwide network of global literacy coaches. We will, I will be financially independent. I will be a better version of myself and be able to travel at least twice a year to visit friends and family. <laughs> All right. All right. So as we close out, these are our invitations to all of you out there. Um, we will be continuing our weekly workshops in the winter, um, winter and spring. We have a whole series of workshops that are lined up and stay, you can stay tuned for details. We are going to be digging into direct instruction and precision teaching and really focusing on incorporating um, that um, high quality academic, remedial academic um, programs into your homeschool programs and how that can look and how it can help kind of amplify the work that you're doing. We are continuing to offer weekly family coaching, one hour per week. Um, and our package is $750 for between 10 and 10 to 15 hours um, worth of coaching services, depending on your needs. Um, we are offering daily direct instruction for those of you who need someone to work directly with your kiddos. Um, we're offering packages for $1,500 for 40 to 60 hours of direct instruction. And we are continuing to raise funds through our GoFundMe to support our Alaskan Oasis. And so we can purchase all of the um, direct, instruction, direct instruction curriculum and testing kits that we need um, to continue um, offering training and support to families around the world. Don't forget to like, comment, and share on socials. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. We will see you next week for our final workshop in the Finding Our Heart series, workshop seven, where we will be digging into the final components about how you can make your homeschool program the most effective and efficient you can. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you soon.